Previously on Spirit Science. Recently, thousands of clay tablets were pulled out of a lost city thousands of years old. They described a new version of our history that is putting the pieces back into place. The continent of Atlantis was a thriving home for the human race, but we had visitors, one of which changed our evolutionary path forever. Something I should have mentioned last time, Thoth's father Thome was one of the Nikals who set up Atlantis on the island of Udal. That island, the top of the Tree of Life, was the brain of Atlantis, and on it was a small city called Poseidon. This city is what Plato was discussing when he said that Poseidon bore ten children, the ten circles on the Tree of Life. Poseidon was made of three rings painted in black, red, and white stones, and it was the symbol for Atlantis. The inner circle represented the Nikals. The middle circle were the priesthood, called the Maya, and the outer circle represented the regular people of Atlantis. We'll come back to this down the road. There were only a few thousand Martians who came to Earth through the synthetic Merkaba. The first thing they did when they arrived in Atlantis was try to take over the continent. They tried to declare war and invade. However, they were vulnerable due to their small numbers compared to the millions of Atlanteans, and we finally subdued them. We were able to stop them from conquering us, but we could not send them back. When this happened on our evolutionary path, we now had the planetary consciousness of a 14-year-old girl. The Martians were an incredibly male species and also very old. So what you had was a 14 year old girl being taken over by a 60 or 70 year old man. We had no choice in the matter. The Martians just stepped in and said, like it or not, we're here. They didn't care what we thought or felt about it. Really, it was no different from what the settlers of North America did to the Native Americans. Once the initial conflict was over, it was agreed that the Martians would try and understand this female thing they lacked, this emotional feeling, which they had none of at all. Things more or less settled for a while, but the Martians slowly began to implement their left brain technologies, which the Atlanteans knew nothing about. One after the other, the Martians kept putting out these left brain inventions until the Atlanteans slowly began to see things through their left brain. We slowly began to become a male species. The Martians gained control bit by bit until eventually they had all of the power, as was their intention. The animosity between Atlanteans and the Martians never subsided, not even till the end of Atlantis. They hated each other. The Atlanteans were shoved down and treated like inferiors. It was like a marriage that the female component didn't like, but the male component didn't really care if she liked it or not. It remained this way for a very long time, until about 26,000 years ago, when the next phase slowly began. Before we continue, we have to talk about polar shifts. See, in the 1930s, Edgar Cayce was channeling information for a geologist when he stopped and he said, there's something you should know. In the near future, the Earth's poles are going to shift. Casey was a brilliant man with a very strong connection to higher dimensions, where he communicated with other beings for the human race. Ultimately, it was because of his channelings that the belief system called New Age was created. This is again just putting what he was doing into boxes of understanding, because no one else understood what he was doing at that time. Nevertheless, when Casey talked, people listened. Geologists began exploring the possibility of a polar shift, and they found something remarkable. A string of major pieces of evidence came forth and lent tremendous weight to what Casey was saying, and they have now changed the world's view on the subject. Scientists believe that if there was going to be a physical pole shift, there would also be a change in the magnetic poles. Through studying lava beds, geologists were able to see where the planetary magnetics were when the lava beds hardened at certain depths. They found that the earlier magnetic poles were not where they were now, but in Hawaii. The last shift that took place was 13,000 years ago, and we will get there in the story soon. They did another test and found that it had shifted again 26,000 years ago as well. Scientists also learned that polar shifts happen very quickly. In a single day, the magnetics would do a complete flip, or turn 90 degrees. There's that number again. And within 24 hours, the sun would be rising differently than it did the previous day. This shift has happened hundreds of times over the last 100 million years on Earth, but it's speeding up now and happening faster and faster. Now only 13,000 years between each shift a whole new viewpoint is beginning to be understood. From space, would this not appear as a pulse? Now, there's a lot more to talk about with polar shifts, but I'm going to give you the basics and provide sources if you want to learn more. A scientist named Charles Hapgood was studying this at great detail because the leading theory behind what caused polar shifts was still underdeveloped at the time. He came up with a theory that demonstrated to be possible through various experiments. Through these experiments, they learned that the surface of the Earth, the crust, could slip over the main mass of the Earth, which continues its rotation as if nothing happened. The crust would rotate and spin out of control until eventually it settles again in a new location aligned with the new magnetics. During this time, there are massive earthquakes and tsunamis and devastations that rock the world. 
Doesn't that sound a bit like the destruction described in the Book of Revelations? Now, I don't want to freak anyone out. Besides Edgar Cayce's account, many other ancient prophecies, including Nostradamus and Mayan prophecies, have talked about polar shifts in one way or another. And modern science is becoming increasingly aware that there is going to be a polar shift in our near future, which is lining up with our consciousness shift, though they don't take that aspect into account. It's funny, actually. A while back, Nova did two reports on polar shifts, and both times, NASA shut them down. Then recently, Nova released a new video, which I showed you a little bit of last time, called Earth's Magnetic Storm. That video shows all of the evidence for pole shifts without actually using the words pole shift. It's almost as if a specific company doesn't want us knowing about this and the evidence that's been brought forth. Polar shifts are directly related to the magnetics of the planet as well. Planetary magnetics are supposed to look like this, but the reality is much different. Our magnetics have been weakening over the last 500 years or so, and today, they look a little more like this. It was the magnetics becoming more and more warped that's causing many of the problems we've seen in the last 20 years. Birds follow the magnetics of the planet to migrate, and they'd be ending up in places they shouldn't be. Whales were continually beaching themselves in the 90s because they followed these magnetics, which led them to land where there should have been water. As for humans, you know how on the night of the full moon there are more rapes, murders, and violent crimes than any other night of the lunar cycle? Well, the moon affects the magnetics of the Earth, slightly. But the magnetics are so warped right now, it's affecting how we think and act as a planet. Our collapse of social structure is related to the geomagnetics of the Earth. Or perhaps it's the other way around. There's one other thing that we need to discuss about polar shifts. They always line up with a consciousness shift. They are interrelated. Thoth lived on Atlantis for a very long time, and he told us that he saw the Earth shift five times, watching the sun rise in the east, and then the west, then the east, then the west. This is how to explain why during a consciousness shift at the end of Lemuria, it sank beneath the oceans and Atlantis rose. If the crust was spinning randomly around the planet, many geological events such as continents rising and falling would take place. Now that we have an understanding of polar shifts, we can continue with this drama on Atlantis. 26,000 years ago, we were exactly where we were today on the procession of the equinox. We had gone through our falling asleep phase and we were about to begin waking up. It was at this point that there was a small consciousness shift. We actually went down in consciousness, not up. A piece of Atlantis about the size of Rhode Island sank into the ocean. This caused a tremendous amount of fear within the Atlanteans because they thought they were going to lose the whole continent like what happened with Lemuria. Because of the consciousness shift, one of the bigger things they lost was their connection to the future. They couldn't foresee big events such as the potential sinking of their home. After about 200 years, this fear began to subside. Now in both the Bible and the Sumerian records, the accounts of Adam, Eve, and all of their children were recorded to have exceptionally long lifespans, like 900 years or so. So 200 years for us back then is like 20 years for us today. We'll explain how we got there soon. Things kind of settled for a while, and then between 13,000 and 16,000 years ago, a comet approached the Earth. Because we were living at a high consciousness across all dimensions, the Atlanteans became aware of it before it hit. A great conflict occurred in Atlantis. The Martians, who were in the minority, even though they were in control, wanted to blow it out of the sky with their laser technology. However, the Nikals had learned of the comet's true nature, and the Atlanteans protested. They said that the comet was in divine order. They had to allow it to take place naturally. Let it hit the Earth. That's what's supposed to happen. The Martians fought the Atlanteans, but in the end, they gave in. The Martians agreed to let it hit the Earth. When the time arrived, it came screaming into the atmosphere, plunging into the Atlantic Ocean, just off to the western shores of Atlantis, near where Charleston, South Carolina is now. Only that was at the bottom of the ocean at the time. The remnants of the comet are now scattered across four states, and science has definitely determined that it hit at least 12,000 years ago, if not more. They're still finding pieces today. Although the main portion struck near Charleston, a few fragments actually hit the main body of Atlantis, crashing into an area right where the Martians were living, killing a huge portion of their population. They were pissed. They said, it's all over, we're divorcing you, and we're gonna do whatever we want. You can do what you want, but we will never listen to you again. We know this whole bit. We've seen it in divorced families throughout the world. And the children? Well, look at our modern world today. We are the children. You can guess what the Martians did next. Their primary interface with the reality was control, and when their anger rose to meet their desire for control, they decided to take over the Earth. They began to once again create a complex like the one they built on Mars long ago to try and create another synthetic Merkaba. If they had succeeded, they would have gained control over everything on the planet. The only thing was, around 50,000 Earth years had passed since they had built a Merkaba, and they didn't quite remember how to do it. But they thought they did. The Martians built the buildings in Atlantis. They set up the whole experiment, threw the switch, and lost control. The destruction was immense. In this reality, you can hardly make a greater error than to create an out-of-control Merkaba. The experiment began to rip open the dimensional levels. 
not the higher ones, but the lower ones. To give an analogy, if you took a knife and slit open your stomach, the stomach acids would seep into other parts of the body that it's not supposed to be in. That's like ripping open the dimensions. The Martians almost destroyed the earth. The environmental disaster we are experiencing today is nothing in comparison, though today's disasters are a direct result of these events. Because of this tear in the dimensional levels, a huge number of lower dimensional spirits and beings were thrown out of their comfort zone and into these higher levels. They were forced into a world that they did not know or understand. To survive, they needed bodies and began automatically entering into the bodies of people. For every human body, there were hundreds of lower dimensional spirits inhabiting them. These beings were earthlings like us, but very different, not coming from this dimension. It was a catastrophe, probably the biggest the earth has ever seen.